News Talk 95.1 FM and 790 AM. We are KFYO Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin, 735 AM. 43 pretty chilly degrees out there this morning. And look who's in the studio here, Matt. Who is it? Well, that's you, you don't recognize this guy? <laughs> Everybody knows Eddie McBride. He's the president and CEO of the Lubbock Chamber of Commerce. Good morning, Eddie. Now, I remember morning. last time he was here, he was talking about barbecue. Barbecue. Matt, we did a good job. Oh, Dave, good morning. Man. Yeah, that was a good barbecue we had. I'm just going to say it bothers me a little bit that Chad was a judge. And I was not. Ah, you should have. Should have. We should have talked about that. Chad's been been there a couple of times. I think he enjoys himself rather well. well so my, my, well, Chad. Now you know. He, you no. know, Chad just hardly. You can't hardly get Chad to eat anything. You know? I've <laughs> I've said this. I told Chad this, and he said what? So, uh, but I'm going to tell you this. My palate for barbecue is much better than Chad's. I know. Good barbecue from bad, so much better than Chad does. Well, we'll have to get you in there next year, Matt. Remind me, don't uh, let me let me write it down and say Matt needs to come be a judge. Now we won't replace Chad. I mean, I, you can sit at a different table. You yeah. don't have to sit with I, Chad. I, I think we should replace Chad. I think I don't think Chad needs to be there. Well, my gosh, you had a hundred and eleven. Yeah, a teams. team, cooking yeah, teams yeah. this year. So you're going to have to have more it was, judges. It was aren't the biggest you? one yet. How yeah. many? How many people did y'all have come out? We, you know, there's really uh, over eight thousand, okay. and I, I was saying eighty five hundred at least. And people were, you know, the folks who were familiar that come every year said obviously the crowd that they thought was the biggest one we've ever had. Mm -hmm. And we did it in a different location. We did it a little bit north. We did it mm -hmm. north of Broadway where we normally do it. So we we did it right north of the Wells Fargo Center there on on uh, Avenue N and O and then on on both Main Street over to Ninth Street. Mm -hmm. So it was, the footprint was a lot wider. And, so and people it, were a little more spread out. Yeah, more spread out, but still folks were complaining because the you know there are crowds at the different cooking teams getting something to eat, and yep. then there are crowds that gather together in the middle of the intersection and stuff, and, and so people still complain about the fact it was too crowded. So that's a nice problem to yeah, have yeah. for us. Yeah, exactly. I mean, was, well, I, and I intended to... And there was plenty uh, of food. Plenty of food. Yeah, plenty of food. Plenty of food. I intended to introduce you and talk about what a somber morning this is and can we kind of took off on the barbecue thing but uh um you, your thoughts about uh, what's going on of course at texas tech with the police shooting yeah dave i think um our condolences out to the family of the officer obviously the texas tech police department the campus and the community in general are obviously obviously in a state of shock and and we want to pass out our condolences and our thoughts and prayers both to the family as well as the Tech Police Department and, and the campus. We know what a somber moment this is, you know, and it's a it's a tragedy bringing it so close to home. It's just so sad, obviously, the the unnecessary loss of life and and uh, but what a what a great reaction on behalf of our law enforcement folks to to get the suspect as quickly as they did. Yeah, to yeah, within that, an hour, I think. Oh, oh yeah, and, and I think that is probably the first time since I've been here that the campus has put, been put on a lockdown of that degree. You know, and mm -hmm. and so it it reverberates throughout the community. We all feel very badly for for uh, the the campus in that respect. Yeah. President Skubinik made some uh, good remarks last night, and uh, we just wish our best for both the leadership. I know that the governor reached out very early last night to pass his condolences to the chancellor and to President Skubinik and the campus in general as well. So, uh, mm -hmm. nonetheless, that's we hope that uh, that they recover and grieve as as well as they can. And of course, we will in time. We will we will bounce. Uh, we will <clears throat> bounce back, and we will keep on keeping on. But, yep, uh, yep. Uh, well, of course, great things going on at the uh, Lubbock Chamber of Commerce. I know that you've got – well, we just – you just completed the barbecue event last m month. Yep, last and two weeks ago. Gosh almighty, it seems yeah. like a three weeks ago this week. All-time record. <laughs> I mean, now, I, I know when we talked about this years ago, about the barbecue uh, <clears throat> over Brand X, uh, you were uh, you had gotten – this is something we kind of took from Amarillo, isn't yeah, it? Oh, yeah, we patterned it exactly after Amarillo, yeah. and we're very proud but, to uh, follow but, the uh, – But as I remember now, you have blown completely by Amarillo. Well, I, I don't know what – what amount of folks? If you now, remember, they're listening you, up in Amarillo. You and I got in trouble. Well, you didn't get in trouble, but I got in trouble. You know, because <laughs> whatever you want to do, you want to be better than everybody. Absolutely. Else. I mean, so there's nothing to the matter with me saying that. But the fact of it is, is we're on. We have our own footprint here. We have our own style. We have our own persona. And so, but I still remember the year that I wanted to do my very first one was the first year I was at the chamber, and the guy I was replacing. He said, "That's not our genre." 
So I went back to the office and got my dictionary out and looked up genre. <laughs> and I said, you know, this guy's nuts because this is our genre. This, this is, is this is hey, what Lubbock's this all about. Is freaking West Texas. <laughs> Barbecue, beer, and music. It can't get any better than that. <laughs> so it's been fun. But yeah. I think, you know, in celebrating downtown, I think, you know, the things that we do down there, I think is uh, really attractive to, to, to recognize the importance of that. What do, what do you got coming up? We got a, uh, this is busy time again. We have, this is called Chamber Fever, Stevens. And we, next week we get to celebrate our Hispan- Hispanic heritage. We've been, you know, we merged with the Hispanic Chamber several years yes. ago. And so mm-hmm. we've been doing as and much how outreach. That, how has that worked? It, it's it's seamless now. It's a uh, we we I think uh, we we recognize the importance of the Hispanic Absolutely. business growth in our community, and you know we reach out, and I think we're very reflective of the of that d- sector of our business community, both on our board as well as in our membership. And and so next week we have Steve Gomez, the head coach of the LCU Lady Ch- Chaps champion team. He's Fantastic. he's speaking, uh, and it's this is tomorrow. And so and again, what what we're recognizing is is the fact that how important Hispanic businesses are to our community but then next week a week from tomorrow we celebrate the harvest uh, we have a harvest lunch and we have a Sukhant Mas- Musra he's uh, and I know I'm messing up his name but he's the associate vice provost for international programs and agricultural applied economics so he is uh, an expert on farm and farm issues in our area and agricultural issues so uh we celebrate the harvest next week. So two very important factors of our community. We celebrate this week and next week. Then the week after, we have the uh, the state of the – well, first off, it's the uh, state legislative forum where we recognize uh, a lot of legislators from around the state as well as State Senator Charles Perry and State Reps John Frulo and Dustin Burroughs. And we'll mm-hmm. be bringing several of their peers from across the state to talk about several issues and then – that day we cap off our legislative forum with the state of the Texas Tech University system. And it's Chancellor Duncan and Presidents Skubinick and Mitchell do a great job at, uh, at pre- well, presenting the, the importance of the university are, in our community. Are these uh, events uh, open to the public? Yep. you can. Uh, members obviously get a discounted price, mm-hmm. and non-members get to pay a little bit more and yeah. encourages them to be members. But these are great events. Go, I bet if you go to the Lubbock Chamber of Commerce website, you can learn www.lubbockchamber.com. Yes, sir. All of this stuff doesn't but I mean, you can go and learn much more about my a brief opportunity to to tell you all about it on the air but yes sir it's a it's a, a lot of information there but this is the season by which we do several things we wrap up toward the end of the year is what we're doing we just also announced our new leadership Lubbock class for 2018 we also just just right after that announced our 20 under 40 awardees for this year okay uh, let's take a quick break and we'll come back on the other side yes sir all thank right. you News Talk, 95.1 FM and 790 AM. We are KFYO Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin, 747 AM. And back with the uh, President and CEO of the Lubbock Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Eddie McBride. Eddie, what we, uh, see, where are we going next? We, uh, you, you were talking about the State Legislature Forum. Yes, yes. That's coming up next. Um, and we've we've uh, covered uh, a lot of these areas. So what's uh, what's... Uh, in the future for the chamber. Well, one of the things that we also do starting in November, we uh, have a uh, legislative appreciation forum. We 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 want to give access to S- Senator Perry and again Representatives Burroughs and Frulo. So we have a lunch where they have an opportunity to talk what how they think both the the state legislative session went this year as well as obviously what they think going forward so we'll have an opportunity in november to recognize that as well but one of the things that i think is real exciting we're starting our second year of our young entrepreneurs academy and again in getting back to our business focus we're this year we have 22 students signed up for this next year's class where we're actually going to teach them how to become their own ceos they're going to create their own jobs they're going to go through three distinct phases of the program where they learn how to develop their idea, they they create their pitch, and then they do their launch. We actually end up having a Shark Tank-like event, an investor panel, where these as young as 12-year-old kids get up there and make pitches about their new business that they've created. And so they're actually this like Lemonade Day? Well, no, it's, it's beyond Lemonade Day where they actually uh, – 
uh, do that one day a year. In, in Lemonade Day, obviously, we have several kids who are in the Lemonade Day program. What a great learning experience is yeah. that. But this is obviously something for them to even get their own DBA. They can create their no kidding, bona fide, real, uh, you know, official business. And, and they actually have to create their marketing scheme. They have to develop a website. They have to do everything. Even you as an entrepreneur has gone through, Dave. So it is pretty cool opportunity for us to teach young people about how to obviously create jobs and create businesses. So that's a we're getting a, ready to start our second program. So that's a real cool thing that uh, we ought to bring some kids in here sometime and let y'all talk to them in the future after they get started in their program. Y'all would get a kick out of that. That w- that would be interesting. I'll bet there's there's some good ones. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's fun. So as far as the Chamber of Commerce, I, I know that uh, we've had you on before, but I don't think we've ever talked about if if you have a business in Lubbock, how do you become a part of the Chamber of Commerce? The uh, the application process is most folks, I mean, you can sign up online. And, and because we are a membership organization, businesses pay us dues, obviously, to belong. Mm-hmm. And what that does is that obviously pays for both the salary of the staff as well as for all the logistics and planning efforts that we do on their behalf. Mm-hmm. So all you have to do is LubbockChamber.com and do it that way or call down to our office, 761-7000 and ask for Brenda Richardson, and Brenda Richardson, who is our business development coordinator, would be glad to extol the virtues of what their businesses and what they can get from their membership with yeah. the Chamber. Well, okay. and, one, and some of the advantages, I think, uh, Matt, of the Chamber, and tell me if I'm wrong, Eddie, but it's the it's the networking. Oh, yeah. That, that, that's, you have these Chamber events what, every week, every other week? Oh, uh, we have Mix, that's, their mixers. Yeah, yeah we have uh, business after hours, which yeah, is yeah. There you go. And we have those every two weeks. Um, and and at, at some chamber members' business. That's right. And you get to meet other uh, networking is probably one of the basic functions of any chamber in the world as far as offering the opportunity for mm-hmm. business relationships to be developed. And so that's what the strength of any chamber is in that regard. Okay, and, and then as far as the Lubbock Chamber of Commerce, how do they how do they connect with other chambers or, or the national, because I mean, Chamber of Commerce is is a national organization, right? Right. There's there's several, and then there's the Lubbock Chamber of Commerce. Is the Lubbock Chamber just part of that, or how do they how do they work together? Matt, starting with the the national level, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce mm-hmm. obviously is a, the the big big business, and and they got a lot of small business too, but they have millions of bi- millions of businesses mm-hmm. in the U.S. Chamber, right? And they do national level, obviously federal uh, federal advocacy and national support of uh, businesses as well. Then we have the Texas Association of Business, which is the state chamber of commerce, mm-hmm. and they look at things more on the state level. I mean, they look at federal impacts on what hurts business, but uh, and then we on the local level obviously uh, look out for all the things from both uh, what goes on at City Hall, what goes down in Austin, and what goes on in D.C. as well. Yeah. Now, you can also be members of the State Chamber of Commerce that look out specifically for state issues. And then the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, they, all of us have a different level of business education, mm-hmm. advocacy, as well as membership, uh, the networking opportunities to meet other businesses to conduct business as well. Yeah, but mm-hmm. as far as the Lubbock Chamber convert. Chamber of Commerce, uh, what y'all are looking at is, um, a- at least the way y'all look at things is locally, and that's to take care of things locally, politically locally. Um, y'all, y'all, I mean, you look at state and, and nationally, but you're thinking about Lubbock even looking it, it at It starts that locally. Way. Yes, sir, Matt. We actually were involved in five federal lawsuits last year, though, on behalf of our members. Mm-hmm. So we also were very active in the state legislative session, making sure that uh, our legislators try to, you know, do pro-business things instead of anti-business things. So right. so although we are very locally focused, and that's our first and, and foremost impact, we also do things on behalf of our members with the uh, where the federal government over regulations that they've done in the past. We again, we were involved in five different federal lawsuits, several that had with EPA. One was the uh, the overtime rule. We mm-hmm. we did a very good. We actually joined on as plaintiffs. Okay. In in amicus briefs, we signed on with five different issues last okay. year. Okay. Real quickly, how is uh, is the overtime rule? Has that gone away now that Trump's in here, or is that still there? Let's or? say let's say that it's been uh, it's been overturned. Overturned. Okay. Uh, n- new rules are considered being written at this point in 
overtime. We didn't oppose overtime. Uh-huh. We opposed the amount and everything that they actually imposed on us. Right, so. and, and I think it also had an imposition on those that were salary. Right. Which and, was and one of the biggest they increased. Listen, they increased the minimum salaries. We got, we got to, we've got to take a break. Eddie's so good. I wanted to give you an opportunity to do your elevator speech. Matt, but, let me. But, but, <laughs> Matt, help me. <laughs> okay. But there's the music, and we've got to take a break. And we're so glad that you came out. Uh, love the Chamber of Commerce. You thank guys you, doing Dave. a great, great job down there. Well, Dave, Matt, thank you all for letting us be with you today. We'll be back with more after this.